And we're going to spend a little time with Rodrigo Medellin. He is a renowned Mexican mammologist, an explorer at large with the National Geographic, and he's credited with saving the tequila bat from extinction. He slogged through caves of shin deep bat guano more times than he can count. He's worked on the ecology and conservation of bats for over 40 years. And one thing that he's always happy to talk about is crucial services and benefits that bats provide for us and ecosystems. We need our bats. So let's go. Let's bring Rodrigo in. Hey, Rodrigo, how are you? Hey, Joe. It's good to see you again. Thank you for having me. Yeah, great to see you. We, you're always welcome at the Global Biodiversity Festival. We love the bats. Thank you. Thank you. We, we need that love of bats to permeate the entire world. And that's exactly what I hope I'll be able to convey to your audience today. Well, you, you've sold some of the audience with tequila. I mean, that, that's got, <laughs> it's got to have some of them excited. And right. once they hear some more ecosystem services, it's over. They're on board, I'm sure. It's all over. That's right. Should we start right on? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Here we go. Uh -huh. Share screen. Oh, my God. Let's see. So are you seeing my presentation now? Not yet. Not yet. Let's, uh, is there any message on the screen? Uh, it's, uh, I need to, I, oh, I see. Let me get to this one. Here we go. There we go. Now it's coming. We got it. And now it should be in a, in a presentation mode, right? It is nice and full screen. I love it. Perfect. Wonderful. All right. Thank you, Joe. So here we are. Whoops. What did I do? Are you there? Yeah. Yeah, we're still here. Yeah. Okay. So here it is. Uh, uh, talk about bats. Talk about Global Biodiversity Festival. Well, bats are a very significant part of biodiversity. And what I'm going to tell you now is how bats are connected to your everyday life. Nobody really understands or even is aware of the fact that bats are touching every day of our lives. And this is the task that I have decided to take on for today's talk. Uh, why bats matter for your everyday lives. First, number one, bats are not rats. Do not say that bats are rats because they have absolutely nothing in common. Rats look the same, pretty much every rat looks the same. They have the same food. They tend to have lots and lots of babies many times a year, and they are short-lived two years, three years, and that's it. And they certainly cannot fly. Whereas bats have many different shapes, and we'll get into that. Their diet is extremely diverse from species to species to species. Every female has a single baby every year, and that's the end of it. And they're really long lived. Our most long lived bat right now is living in Europe at the tender age of 43 years. All right. And of course, they do fly. So here you have uh, the mice, the rats. You've seen one rat, you've seen them all. They all have that pointy face with the bulging eyes, with the round ears, etc. If you look at the bats, you have over 1,400 species in the world. Mexico has 138. All the feeding guilds and more, and you'll see what I mean by and more. And they're very, very abundant in the tropics and in some temperate areas. But what does it mean for ecosystems and for humans? This is just a collage of only 12 of the Mexican species of bats. It's only 12. And you can see there that there's bats with big eyes, with small eyes, with big ears, with short ears, with very long snouts, very short snouts. And each configuration is telling you that that particular bat is doing something different in the environment. They may be feeding on insects that they capture from the vegetation, or they may be feeding on insects in the air, just catching them in midair, or feeding on nectar and pollen like these two guys here with the long snouts, or feeding on blood like this guy over here, 
or feeding on fruit like this guy over here. So you can see that the, every configuration tells you something about these different species of bats. There's uh, uh, three out of every four bats feed on insects and they can build colonies of up to millions of bats in one single cave. Uh, then about 12% of the bats eat fruit and they're more abundant than all frugivorous birds put together in the tropics. And the colonies can get to up to hundreds of thousands of bats in one colony. Then there's uh, about 10% of the bats that feed on nectar and pollen, and they can compose colonies of up to hundreds of thousands of bats in one cave. Then there's three or four species that feed on fish. Did you know that there's bats that feed on fish? I bet you didn't. Well, there they are, and they can build colonies of up to hundreds of bats in one, uh, one hollow tree, for example. Then there's a few carnivorous species, about 10 to 20 species that feed on mice, on birds, and on other bats. And they, they build colonies of up to 10 bats in, one, in a single one. And then finally, three out of 1,400 species, three feed on blood. And they build colonies of up to 1,000 bats. So let's look uh, at, at the benefits that we get. Just in, uh, just in northern Mexico, on the south of the United States, we estimate that there's 40 million bats of this one species. We're talking about 1,400 species in the world where we're talking about this one species, the Mexican free tail bat that you see over here. Well, each million bats destroys 10 tons of insects every night. Imagine that. Imagine that we lose that one species alone and those 10 tons of insects per million per night are going to start accumulating and accumulating. And in the end, you're not going to have any, co any, any crops, e including Ovid's, uh, Ovid's crops in, in Costa Rica. They need the help of the bats to control uh, pests there. Many people have seen this kind of thing. You open a corn husk like that, and then you find that little larva that is the larva of a, of a moth that represents about 60 to 70% of the diet of that particular species. So today, if you've had any chips, if you had any potato chips, or you're wearing any cotton, or you have any corn product from chips to corn, uh, to uh, popcorn, to tacos, etc., you are connected to bats. There is your connection right there. Um, you've seen uh, the same kind of, of, uh, of little worms, which are actually larvae in cotton fields. Well, one third of the cotton in the world is due to bats feeding on, the, uh, on, on that particular pest, which is another moth. You're wearing any cotton, you're eating any corn, chili, tomato, rice, wheat, candies, etc., or you're drinking any coffee or tea, you are connected to bats already. So there. Problem solved, you have your first connection to bats. The second benefit that I want to talk to you about is the seed dispersal that bats provide in all of the tropical forests in the world. Here, you're going to find something that you will like, that you will enjoy eating. It may be the guavas up here, or the figs, or the uh, yerba santa, or capulin, or sapotes of different kinds, or sour soap like this. There's so many different plants. This is just a sample, but there's dozens and dozens and dozens of fruits that are for sale in the Mexican markets, in the Brazilian markets, in the African markets, in the Asian markets, that we have them there because bats have been dispersing the seeds of these plants for millions of years. No bats, we don't have this kind of process. You can see them there. They're, uh, they're taking the fruit from the, from the plant and then flying off and eating it somewhere there, somewhere else, where they're going to eat the pulp and drop the seed. Bam! There you see this person right there. There's a, there's a very fascinating group of bats called the tent-making bats. And these tent-making bats disperse very large seeds. The seeds the size of your thumb that these bats are dispersing. So what you see here is that the tent-making bats construct different types of tents in the vegetation using their teeth and their claws. 
they 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 configure certain leaves of certain plants to to look like an umbrella, like a, an inverted boat, like a tip, like a paradox, etc., and under which they are going to roost. So, for example, in the south of Mexico, you're going to find, running in the rainforest, you're going to find palms that look like this, like droopy kind of, uh, kind of leaf. Well, if you go under and you look up, you will see this group of bats there, and they are the ones responsible for the chewing around, like this round chewing that makes that leaf to fall and drop like an umbrella. So this is an umbrella tent. And if you look below, right under the umbrella tent, you're gonna find these lots and lots of seeds that the bats have brought in. They have chewed on the, on the pulp and dropped the seeds there. And that is where forest regeneration is coming from. You don't need regeneration programs for forest, reforestation, restoration of forest. If you let the bats do their job, you have it. Your, your forests are going to come back. Um, we, we, we look at, the, at how many seeds they actually disperse per square meter right under the tents and also in the forest to compare what would be the situation if the bats were not there dispersing the seeds under their tents and then outside beyond the tents where there's no bats dispersing seeds, how many, how many seeds do you find there? Well, look at that. There's a lot of seeds over there. And it's very easy for you to identify the species of, of tree that is going to sprout from those seeds. Look at those beautiful uh, Honduran white bats under the tent that they built. So this is not only an amazing service for the forest and for our food, but also they're so beautiful, right? Here, I'm going to show you one female which is building her own tent right there. She's chewing right there and she's, uh, she's going back and forth and back and forth and chewing and pulling the, the leaf so that it falls and, sh and she and the rest of her group can roost under that particular uh, tent. That is the tent making bats that are helping us have beautiful fruits and amazing forests all over the country, all over the world. All right, let's go to the next benefit, which is pollination. There's a lot of bats that do what hummingbirds do during the day, but they do it at night. You don't see them, but they are doing it there, and they are often much more abundant than any hummingbird. The thing is that hummingbirds are diurnal like us, and we can see them. At night, we don't see the bats, but they are doing this for us. Look at them visiting all different kinds of flowers, columnar cacti, uh, baobab seeds, baobab fruits, uh, flowers, and banana flowers, etc. So there's many ecologically and, and economically important plants that are pollinated by bats, from columnar cacti to agave plants to seva trees, and lots, lots more. This is a seva tree, which is the, um, the sacred tree for the Maya. The Maya thought that when you die, you climb up a seva tree to get to heaven. Well, seva trees are pollinated by bats. And look at that beautiful bat completely covered in yellow pollen. They almost look like a different species because they're all yellow, but they're all yellow because of the pollen. They're completely covered with pollen. Uh, and then look at this beautiful picture. This is a nectar feeding bat that is visiting an agave flower. So let's jump right in and look at the agave bats Go to the Sonoran Desert. This is in the north of Mexico. This is arriving. This is the females that are all gravid, all pregnant. Look at the bellies of all of these females that are coming into that cave. And we look at that cave with the help of, um, of infrared videos to see how many bats are actually in that cave. So this is the largest known colony of this species. And what you see here is... All of these bats are coming out. They're all pregnant and lactating females, females that come to that cave to have their babies there. Uh, they have migrated from 1,500 to 2,000 kilometers away to the south in central and southern Mexico, all the way up to the Sonoran Desert here. But I also need to get into the cave 
and try to understand how successful has their reproductive effort been that year. So I need to wait until the last female leaves the cave, like at midnight or so, and then I go in and this is what I find. Look at that beautiful picture of baby bats. These are all one day old or two day old baby bats that were left by the mother there in, in, in a kind of a daycare, kind of the uh, maternity colony. Well, now you, I want you to, to, to think, how is a mother that has left her baby there going to find her baby when she comes back from feeding? It's going to be a nightmare. You're not talking 20 or 30. You're talking thousands of babies packed like that. Well, this next video is going to tell us a little bit about how they do it. And look at this baby. He knows that his mother is back even before the mother is coming into the uh, field of view of the camera. The, the, the video starts and the baby starts peace and quiet. And then the baby is ready to get out of there. Mommy, come get me. Mommy, come get me. I want to go home with you. And there's the mother picking up her baby. Uh, imagine what is going on in the brains of both the mother and the baby when they finally re-encounter each other. Finally, the mother lets the baby latch onto the nipple and then, of course, she goes. This happens hundreds of thousands of times every night in that case. And there's the mother taking the baby back to where, where she is going to suckle him in a, in a peaceful part of the cave. Okay, so in sum, let me tell you that we owe much of our food, clothes, and much, many more benefits to bats. And nobody's thanking them. Nobody's even considering the fact that bats are touching every day of our lives. So it is really time to realize that losing our bats is going to have a major negative impact in our life. Please spread the message. Bats are really cool. Not only that. Bats are really important for our life quality. So please get involved. Do whatever you can to help bats. And realize that you need bats and bats need you. And I want to finish by thanking my entire team because this is the group of people that helped me convey these messages to you. And with that, I am going to stop right now sharing the screen. All right, Rodrigo, I mean, so many ecosystem services, so many things that we can't do uh, without the bats. Do they need a new PR agent or something? Why, why aren't we picking up on this? We actually need a lot of allies in the concept of helping bats uh, and defending bats from so many attacks. They are being attacked in this day and age with the pandemic, Joe, unfortunately, Bats have been, have been unfairly accused of giving us the pandemic. That is absolutely not true. Not true at all. If you are going to unfortunately get this virus, you are going to get it from another human being. You are not going to get it from a bat. So these kinds of messages, they need to really permeate. So the focus of your festival, of how important biodiversity is for every one of us, is absolutely essential for people to really uh, come to grasp with the fact that from bats to snakes, to lizards, to spiders, to scorpions, to sharks, we need them all. We are just one more species in the world and we need to respect other species if we want to keep maintaining the well-being of all human beings around the world and the, the, the biodiversity that is life for the planet. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Rodrigo, we this year, Rolex is supporting the Global Biodiversity Festival as part of its Perpetual Planet Initiative. So supporting individuals and organizations using science to understand the world's environmental challenge. So you, uh, my friend, you're a Rolex laureate. I wonder if you can tell us a little bit about how that becoming a laureate helped your career. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I cannot tell you enough about the incredible job that the Rolex people do to, to amplify your message. You might be struggling and fighting in the middle of the rainforest of the Congo and saving one tree at a time. 
But if people don't know about your uh, your message, about your work, about the impact that you're having in that piece of forest, uh, you might as well be minimized into a very small part of the ecosystem. Uh, the fact that Rolex not only gives you a certain amount of money that helps you get to the next level with your project, you know, replicate it or, or expand it to other areas, but also their network of media is incredible. It's really incredible. This is how you, you get your message across to many other countries in the world and many other people are going to hear about you and then they're going to get engaged in that project, reach out to you and say, how can I help? What can I do? So, so Rolex is all over the, the world, really, identifying which are the most uh, critically creative projects that are going to make the world a better place to live for humans and for other, other species in the world. I really cannot tell you enough about these people. They're really great. All right. Well, they clearly made a good decision. Uh, supporting the bats. I think maybe that should be a new slogan. Rolex loves the bats or something. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I like that. That could really catch on, I think. That'd be so good PR for the bats. Absolutely. Most definitely. Yeah. All right. Well, Rodrigo, tell us a little bit about how you're spending your days. Are, are you getting on the field a little bit? What are you up to? Well, thank God I'm already uh, vaccinated both doses. My, my antibodies are way up through the roof, uh, fortunately. So I am I am getting ready to start my field work again, to start my traveling again, etc. For the past year and a half, Joe, I don't think I have ever worked harder than the past year and a half just defending bats and telling people like your audience that bats had nothing to do with this pandemic, that these are that you're not going to get the the, the virus from a bat. So it's been talk after talk after talk after talk here at home. I'm in Mexico City, as you know, and little by little, with all precautions, we have started unfolding a little bit of the, uh, of the work that we need to pick up in the field. For example, I need to tell you, like November last year, a, a student of mine is walking. He's a volunteer at the zoo, at National Zoo in Mexico City, and he tells me, that he's seeing in the hyena enclosure of the of the zoo, he's seeing three columnar cacti that are blooming, and I go go now and set up a camera trap. Those tra those cameras that take the picture of animals that go in front of it. He sets it up, and next next morning he shows me pictures of bats visiting columnar cacti in the middle of Mexico City. So wow. I go crazy. And I talked to the director of the zoo and I say, my friend, could you please, please, please put the hyenas in an enclosure, in a cage, and let us go into the hyena enclosure and set up mist nets to capture these bats there. I want to know what the species and where are they coming from? And he immediately said, yes, yeah, sure. When would you want to do it? I said, in two days on Friday. All right, two days on Friday. We all go there and we find lots of bats visiting these flowers in the middle of the city. Where are they coming from? How did they find out three columnar cacti with flowers? Wow. That led to now we have a full-fledged project under, trying to understand how nectar bats are using the landscape of the city. And we're finding them in places that you would never expect bats visiting agaves and other flowering uh, plants. Amazing, very cool. Right in the city, hanging out with the hyenas. That's pretty cool. <laughs> no, no kidding. I mean, I, I, I got a kick out of that. And of course, I, when I went into the hyena enclosure, I had to go to the hyena cage and thank them for their sacrifice because they're used to being outside all night and everything. And instead, they had them in these little cages for one night only. So I went to, to thank them, but they were not happy. They were growling like really badly. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, they are, they are in a cage, so they probably weren't too thrilled. Exactly. Uh, well, Rodrigo, there's no better friend to the bats uh, than you. Thank you so much for just shining that spotlight on them today. Um, you know, biodiversity is so important. They play such an amazing role in ecosystems, keeping ecosystems healthy and functioning um, in so many different ways. So 
Um, anybody tuning in today is surely sold uh, on the bats and them being our friends, no question. Fantastic. Thank you very much for the opportunity, Joe. All right. Well, you have a great rest of the day, and I'm sure we'll be doing another one of these sometime down the road. All right. Take care. All right. Bye now. Thanks, Rodrigo.